Thank you all for coming. My name is Scott Shasteen. I am the sports information person for Montlow College. Um, you know, our purpose for doing this today is twofold. First of all, we want to get you on campus. Uh, you've all been on campus. Most of you have been on campus. But, you know, we want you to see our facilities. We want you to recognize the fact that Motlow College is, is not just that little school down the road, but it, it's a uh, college that serves 11 counties, that serves almost 5,000 students, that has four full campuses, and the Moore County campus is the largest, the one with the most enrollment for now, and you know, it's where our athletic teams are housed, and, and we appreciate you coming out. We want you to look at Motlow as, as your college, but also it's your audience's college. And, and you know, we hope to sort of further that idea for you. And the second reason we want you to come out is to, so we can serve you a nice lunch. You can meet our coaches and our athletes. I do want to recognize a couple of folks today. Our <coughs> Assistant Vice President for Student Affairs, Ms. Regina Burden is here. Thank you for coming. And our graphics design coordinator, Ms. Sharon Bateman, is here. She puts together all the athletic media guides and schedules and that sort of thing. Uh, so we appreciate Sharon and, and Regina being here. Just want to point out to you, uh, most of y'all are very familiar with this stuff, but I want to point it out that the college website is MontlowSports.com. On Twitter and Facebook, we are Montlow Sports, so we're very easy to find. That's where you will find our schedules, our rosters. And I try to write stories about games after each game and send them out to you. But I really strongly want to invite you to come out for a game and, you know, take pictures and write story as often as you can, as often as you want to. I try to send it out. You guys are all great for, for printing those and distributing those and talking about them on your newscast and things, but you get a great perspective if you come out and, and be part of the game. You're always welcome. There's always a table for you to do whatever you need. Um, we appreciate Deuce Anderson being here. Deuce is the general manager for the ticket in Tullahoma. The ticket is a flagship station, broadcast a lot of our home basketball games. Um, broadcasting baseball and softball is extremely difficult. First of all, just based on the time, it's in the middle of the day, and the, the internet connections and all are just not quite up to the par of the gym. We're working on that. We hope to have that settled. And in fact, uh, Al Clark from WCDT has expressed interest, although Al didn't make it. That's his seat right there with the food that <laughs> hasn't been eaten yet. Uh, but he, he's expressed interest in broadcasting some baseball and softball, so we're going to try to work that out. And if CDT is interested in that in the spring, then we're going to do that. So, you know, thank you for being here. That's sort of some general overview of what we're going to do. We're going to hear from each of our four coaches. They're going to bring in a couple of players each and introduce, introduce them to you. Uh, if you have any questions for the coaches, certainly feel free to ask them. We, we uh, encourage that and the players as well. So we will begin with our new athletic director, interim athletic director officially, I guess, and our third year softball coach, uh, Ms. Tori Raby Gentry. Tori. All right, well, we do want to thank each of you for coming out. I know that you do have busy schedules and a lot of things going on. So also want to thank, she's not here, but Sylvia Collins for allowing us to continue this annual media day and especially Sharon and Scott because they pretty much take care of everything and are wonderful to work with. So um, that being said, highlights from last year, we had again our um, graduation rate across the state as far as our department. Um, for our students was highest among all of our peers in the state. So we're proud of that. And we also um, made its national championship in our men's basketball. So that was a huge accomplishment for that year. And to be able to do both in one year was, was a great accomplishment. So this year we're hoping to continue forward um, and get there uh, with our other sports, continue to improve and continue to have those high standards for our students. 
you know, a lot of colleges can compete, but not a lot of colleges are competing and keeping the standards where they need to be. So that's our goal there. Um, as far as that goes, we have, of course, Matt Sly new on our staff, and you'll hear from him shortly. So came into a fair covered, and that'll be a, a fun new transition. So great thing about community college is you constantly have a turnover of your students. So you get used to kids and get to see them that sophomore year, and then you get to see a whole new crop of freshmen. So it's, it's challenging, but it's also exciting to see those new challenges. So on the softball side of things, I'll go ahead and go into that. Sure, do you have players here? You yeah. Have yeah, it's McKenzie and Kelly. Um, we return 11 sophomores, so this should be a, a better group as far as we'll have leadership that we haven't had in the past. Um, that should make a big difference. Um, we open up our season February 5th, so that's going to be nice and fun and cold. These are two of my captains. This is Kelly Bruning from Marion County and Mackenzie Hopkins from Cornersville. So um, we decided our goal, our goal as a department is that we have all our athletes healthy and a lot of wins on our season. Um, our team, we've decided to get our injuries out of the way this fall. So Mackenzie has just went through surgery on her wrist and we'll be back for season. So um, other than that, like I said, we're, we will be starting a few freshmen, but luckily we're gonna have a lot more experience. But of course that means a lot of recruiting now as well. So. Uh, constant turnover, but uh, we have experience in key positions. Um, Kelly catches and also plays second, third, let's see, right, left, first. So we did have a condensed um, fall season in which I think she first was added to that list this fall. So, And then Mackenzie, of course, will be our starting shortstop, assuming she's healthy. So. Um, as far as that goes, we did play a condensed fall, just basically to, against a lot of four years to get experience and to see what we need to work on. And now we're doing more individual work and hitting the weight room pretty hard to get them ready to go for February. So, any questions for me about softball or about the athletic department or to our young ladies? Anything y'all would like to say about the upcoming season? I'm just ready. <laughs> you, you look it. <laughs> Tori, when do we anticipate opening day for softball? Any idea yet? February 5th. February 5th. Well. Our, the conference tournament, um, they, they switched up that again on us, and baseball's the same way, so we have to start conference play February 21st. So because of that, we had to get some games in before. So it changed up. This year they're doing this year everybody goes to turn everybody can advance to postseason. Last year it was the top four. Everybody advances to postseason. The higher seed plays the lower seed in a three game series the like the last weekend of April and that following weekend the teams that win that will advance to a tournament. So that way everybody a totally new format mm -hmm. Yes. Yes, I think baseball had pretty much already decided on it, so there you go. Well, that's exciting. Yeah, at least everybody gets to go, and it actually you benefit from being a high seed. I mean, you're getting to play at home that first round. So that'll be new for, for our players, too. You know, it was hard enough getting used to the new format of doing the Friday, Saturday, the, the four-game series. So, But the good thing is these sophomores are used to it, so that should help us, too. How many games have you got on your schedule and what kind of time frame have you got to get those games in? We will start February 5th and I think the last week, it's like that around April 25th, around there, I think it's the last that we have to get those in or maybe the week, actually I actually think it's the week before that. So basically it leaves us that last weekend of April to do the, the game series and that 1st of May to, to do the tournament. So. How many games do you anticipate having? Weather permitting, that it's great weather and we can play every one of them. We'll probably will be around, say, 56. So, I you know, like last year's weather, that won't happen. So, but 
And of course, we get more conference games this way too, so it's a, it's a better show of where you're at. Kelly, do you have anything? We're ready for the season. We're a new team with a new attitude. Any other questions? Y'all would uh, ask the baseball players to come in. That would be great. Thanks. Our next coach is Coach McShay. Coach McShay is our longest tenured coach. This is his eighth season as the head of the baseball program. Uh, coach. Let my guys get in here for a minute. I'll introduce to them as well. You guys are very well dressed, by the way. Nice job. Just have a seat. You want to be the one or? Ben, you can sit by yourself. Not here you go. All right. I've got J.C. Daly. Um, he hails from Texas, but he has uh, family that lives in Murfreesboro, so he's not too far away from home. Um, Chris Adams from Huntsville, Alabama, Ben Holland from Murfreesboro, Siegel High School. Um, these guys are all sophomores for us and it's kind of the way our team looks for this year, we have a sophomore pretty much at every position including our top three or four pitchers. Um, four of those guys are third year college students so we have a lot of experience. Ben graduated last year um, but being that he's valedictorian in one of the biggest schools in the state. He went to UT for his freshman year and then said, I got to play baseball. So he came back to us last year, had a great year. Um, he's working on a second associate's degree here, um, trying to get better offers and entertaining some of those right now. Um, Chris and JC both also have great grades, um, getting several offers. Chris is in a boot right now. He's broke his foot last year different bones, same foot, quarter of an inch over. Um, Chris's problem is that he runs too hard. Um, we, we have to run two miles in 14 minutes as a team and he runs his in 10 minutes and 30 seconds, which is five minutes and 15 seconds a mile. Um, it's, uh, um, you know, working too hard. Uh, Daly just got out of cast himself, so injuries um, this fall, which is very uncommon, but, uh, but we've had them. Um, and Daly is majoring in mechanical engineering, political science, and mathematics here at Motlo and has uh, almost a 4.0. And so um, I picked a good group out of our guys to come and talk to you today. They can answer any questions you have. Um, I'm here with the dump button for you radio guys if they say anything they're not supposed to. Um, <laughs> but. Um, our outlook for the year, uh, I'm, I'm excited about it. I think we could be really good. We have good team chemistry. Um, we did lose several talented guys, um, but we also have, as you see, several sophomores stepping in and playing right away. We've got some guys coming back at shortstop and catcher that would have been our starters last year that were injured and missed the whole year. Um, we, you know, Chris was injured most of the year last year, and he'll be back and healthy for us. And so. Um, we're excited about that. Um, we start actually the end of January, that last weekend in January, the first weekend in February. Uh, we look to play about 56 games in regular season, again, weather permitting. Uh, if you have any other questions for these guys, we've been over working on the field all morning. We're going to have an inner squad at 1 o'clock today. Um, got some coaches coming in to watch some of these guys play today. So um, fire away. We'll ask ask whatever you like to know. Your schedule starts at that first week of February, also. Yes, it it will. It's actually I think if I can remember correctly, it's like January 30th, first February 1st, maybe. I'm not positive. We've always started fairly early. We had to move it back a week um, because of the way the conference schedule goes. So you guys got your cold weather gear ready? Mm -hmm. Oh, it's ready uh -huh. this year. Oh yeah, last year it was. If you can play in 30 degrees and windy and snowy, you can play in anything. We played in 13 games last year with, while it was snowy. So we, we have – all of our guys have been there and experienced it and know what it's like. And, and hopefully, contrary to everything everyone says, we will have a mild winter, but uh, we'll be ready to go whether or not we do. Coach, you, you played uh, some ball ball. Could you talk a little bit about 
how that's gone? We, we've actually done really well. Our pitching has been, I mean, all of our games have been two to one, three to one, which is kind of what you expect early on in the fall. Usually the pitching is better. We've done really well. We played two games at MTSU where all the schools in the state come together and over Friday and Saturday everybody plays. And, you know, I think there was 60 or 70 scouts there for those games. Uh, we were supposed to play at Austin P, and that got canceled for weather. We were supposed to play at Lipscomb, and that got canceled. Um, but we did play down at UNA and played against Shelton State. If you're familiar with junior college baseball, they've been in the World Series or played for the championship down there every year, and we beat them twice. So that's a good indication for us. You know, if your pitching is able to hold up and you're able to get enough hits off of guys that have signed at Auburn and Rice, and you know, Shelton's always got really good pitchers, and that's what their 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 thing is. And we were able to go in there and beat them twice, and so that's uh, that's a good sign for us. Pitching is obviously important. How are you looking for that this year? I know you said you have two soft, three sophomores. Out we've got well. we've got several guys on the front end that are going to be really good. Uh, my concern, as well as with my position players and my pitchers, is the young guys and the lack of experience and the amount of work that we need to do to get them ready. Uh, as in the past, we've had 15 to 18 pitchers that only pitch, and this year we're down to about eight. Um, we have several guys that play another position as well, um, but you know, given injuries or guy wasn't ready when he came here or you know other kinds of scenarios we don't have as many um, but what I tell these guys when they get here typically six of you will do all the pitching so uh, if we have four guys with sore arms and if you go back and look at last year the last three weeks of the year I shut down about five of our pitchers because their arms were sore and I'm not going to put that guy in there you know throw 100 pitches and hurt himself so I'd like to add a little bit more depth that way at Christmas time uh, and bring in some guys um, to add some depth and take away any concern we might have there. But I think the guys we have have shown, even our freshmen have shown, they can, they can compete for us. All right. Thank you, guys. All right. You guys got off easy. Yeah. Just sit there and smile and nod. Good. Thank you. Well, that's a given. That's a given. Thank you. Now we'll transition to basketball, which, you know, we understand that softball and baseball are, are a few months off, and it's, it's difficult. Uh, the rosters are inexact. The schedules are not set. But we feel it's important, certainly, to include baseball and softball because it's the opportunity that you get to meet those coaches and players. So now we move to basketball. Aaron Holland is our women's basketball coach. Aaron is in his second season and we talked about Coach Sly having a complete turnover in players. Aaron's not too far from that. He's got a couple coming back but a lot of new players as well. Coach Holland. Thank you guys for coming out. Uh, this is Kaylee Rogers. She is one of only two returning players from last year. She's a sophomore from uh, Manchester. Aaron Thomas, brand new freshman from uh, right down the road in Moore County. And then Brianna McDonald. Uh, she graduated from Shelbyville. She was at UT Martin last year. And uh, she redshirted and she's here this year. Uh, as, far as, as far as the basketball part of this goes, we're a brand new team. Uh, this is Motlow's, as far as women's basketball goes, this is their first true recruiting class in about three years. Um, two years ago when Coach Noodles was here on an interim basis, you know, he didn't, he wasn't able to get any players in here until about August because they weren't sure what they were going to do at that point. Um, then last year I got hired in July and I really wasn't able to have a true recruiting class. But this is a class that I've been working on since I got here. Um, you know, with, with the future in mind, that's what I wanted to work on. And that we are very locally oriented. As far as the community goes, we're very community oriented. Uh, eight of my 13 players are from uh, Motlow service area. Uh, most of those players being from around Tullahoma, Lynchburg, and uh, Winchester in Franklin County. Uh, we're gonna be really young this year uh, with only two sophomores. Uh, that means there's 11 freshmen. Uh, there's gonna be times this year where 
five freshmen are going to be on the floor. And uh, for us to be successful, we're going to have to give them a lot of experience, especially in the beginning part of the year. Um, just because of the way our conference works, we play 18 conference games. Uh, we start right away. That's our second weekend we play conference games. Uh, so we're going to have to get them into the fire early and quick and let them, let them figure it out for themselves a little bit. Uh, but as far as our work ethic, we have a great group. Uh, we, we have a lot more talent this year. I uh, feel like we have a better opportunities to score the ball than we had last year. Uh, very multi-dimensional, very versatile. Uh, we have four players, six foot or taller. Uh, last year we only had one player who was over five foot nine. So this year our size and being physical is going to be something we, we really stress. Uh, we're going to be going up and down a lot and uh, we just want to win, have fun. Um, all well, I'll say all three. To our two sophomores and our redshirt freshmen, they are all on pace to graduate in the spring, so we're looking at graduating 100% of our players. And then next year, I want to graduate all 10 of those other ones. Do um, you guys want to say anything? No. Shy? <laughs> okay. If you guys got any questions or anything. How important was it for you to recruit locally? Very important. Uh, very important. You know, that's one of the things coming in I really wanted to do. Um, we're a community college, so I wanted to put the community back in the college part. Um, I think, especially around here, there's women's basketball in the Middle Tennessee area is so good um, that I feel like I could stock an entire roster from around here and be completely competitive in our conference. Um, I have only two kids from out of state. Um, you know, in, in at other schools, if you look at their rosters, they may have four, five, six players from out of state. We don't need to do that here because we have so much talent in our backyard, I think well, that's something we need to really use. And I also feel like if we buy into the community, they'll buy into our program. So, so something you're hoping to get the recruiting tail in years to come? Yes, yes. And what's nice about it is, you know, instead of me having to drive hours away to go recruit a kid, I can drive five minutes after practice whether it's Tamora County, Tullahoma, Coffee County, wherever, and, and go watch a kid there. This is also for the players. Being such a young team, what's the mindset for going into this season? And what kind of, you know, are you really coming together as a team? You know, how are you going to go in there and win being such a young team? I think us being a new team this year, like, you, you have to be like, um, so if we came back like more than five players from last year, we know how to play with each other. Like I only know play, kind of know how to play with Lacey Gaines. Like she's a return sophomore, so we kind of know. So having like a full team, a new team, we kind of we know how to play with each other, and I think that's that's a good advantage for us. So it's not like it's kind of new going into the season. Like we kind of know how to play with each other. So I think it's a big thing for us. I feel like the freshmen have done a really good job of stepping up, um, not being scared of competition, of thinking that they are freshmen, that they don't they don't have the mindset that they are freshmen. They play as if they were sophomores or upperclassmen, so which is, I think the freshmen are doing a great job right now. Yeah, and I feel like coming in as a freshman, we have to give it all we got just to prove to coach that we want to step up. We can be just as good as the two sophomores. We have to give it literally all we have. How do you feel to be locally playing, I'm sorry, locally playing here, being able to be, you know, not having to represent your um, town? I like playing, you know, just five minutes down the road because I want to show, I want Moore County to be proud of me. I want to show them that, you know, just because we're a single A small school, they think, well, you know, they're not as good as somebody from like a big school. No, we have just as much talent and I just want to make my hometown proud. With only a couple of returning sophomores or new sophomores, um, any added pressure? The it's it 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 kind of a lot of pressure. You, you have to take the leadership role, so. Yeah, it's kind of like a lot of pressure because just like you want to show the freshmen, like we want to leave an imprint when we leave. Like we want to leave something on the floor so they can bring to next year and show like, okay, Kaylee, Bree, Lacey did this. They were good leaders. Now I need to step up and show the freshmen for next year how I need to be a leader. So, so it's how do you be a leader? How do we be a leader? By example. Examples, pretty much. Say you got this, don't worry about it again. Next time, hustle, hard work and practice. Yep. Good job. <laughs> I didn't coach them on what to say. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else?
when does your season tip off? Oh, we start in one week. Uh, Saturday, we play against um, Martin Methodist. Uh, and then from there, it's, it's full tilt. Uh, we play, uh, we start off Saturday, and then the week after that, we play, our, we open up conference, our second game, which, you know, um, being at, in my past, being at four years, you usually don't start conference until around Christmas time or second semester. Um, not here, welcome. Uh, it's right away, you're, you're, you're into the conference swing. And um, we have a stretch there where we play, I believe, three games in five days. So it's going to be a, you know, it's, we, we get ramped up real early, real quick. Let me butt in there and, and point out that in the, in the uh, handout that you've got, the schedule is in there. The first home game for the Lady Bucks is November 2nd. And then the following Tuesday night, November 5th, uh, will also be at home. That's the first couple of non-conference games, and then you jump right into conference play. One more quick question. Is that nerve-wracking? This is for both you and the players. Is that nerve-wracking at all, having a game so, you know, coming up so soon? Uh, you just kind of been thrown into the mix, or do you see this as motivation just to kind of get going and, and start off to a good start? You guys want to go first to me? I'll go first you, you go guys. First. Okay. I like it from a standpoint of, especially for our freshmen, because it's so quick, they don't really have time to look back and reflect. There's, there's no time to be like, what did I do wrong? What did I do right? They've just got to learn right away to whatever happened the last game, doesn't matter. We've got to build, we've got to get better, we've got to do different things. Uh, for, for me, from a preparation standpoint, I don't like it. I like to be very prepared for my opponents. And whenever they come, especially on back-to-back -back days, it's very hard to give true preparation like you want to. Uh, but at the same time, you know, it, it's, it's good for me and good for them just because it's so quick that, you know, they're, we really can't sit back and relish on anything. So we've got to move forward. I like, I think, I'm, I think our team is ready to play next weekend. Like Coach said, I kind of want to be prepared, but I know next week when we play Martin Methodist, he's going to give us plays that we need to work on. And I think our team is just going to come out Saturday and play ball. I think we'll be ready. So with you being here last year, how would you compare how ready your team is now in comparison to the same time last year? Last year, I don't like comparing our team from last year, but I think last year, the problem with us is like, we was a team, but we didn't really run plays. Like, it was, it was a struggle last year, just cause like, we didn't, we didn't really get along or we didn't run a play or people want to be the all-star, the superstar. And this year, like, Everybody, if you're open, we're gonna throw it to you. If you're if you're on fire, we're gonna throw it to you. Let you shoot. If you don't, if you don't make one or two shots, we're gonna keep telling you shoot. It's just like we have that we have that teamwork that we're gonna keep on keeping you up and like just telling you good job and keep on going. We're not gonna bring you down or anything. So I think we're good. I think Kaylee will make a great sports information person in the future. All right, so we uh, will conclude today with our men's basketball coach, Matt Sly. Uh, Matt is our new coach, new to the job. A very unique situation, obviously. We're defending state champions. But Matt comes in with uh, a whole new team. So I'm not sure we're the defending state champions, we're the reigning state champions. How about that? Uh, Matt Sly, the men's basketball head coach. Thank you all again for coming out. Um, we're excited to get things going. We, as, as Scott has said, and, and it's been well documented, we have an entirely new team. Uh, we have 16 guys today going forward, uh, and we're very excited um, to get started. A um, couple guys we have today who are making their grand entrance right now. Have a seat on there. Two guys we have today with us, uh, Kirby Lubin. Kirby is originally from Orlando, Florida. Uh, I'm originally from Lakeland, Florida, so he's a fellow Central Florida native. Uh, Kirby came to us uh, last year. He spent the year at uh, Seminole Community College in Oklahoma. Prior to that, he was at Raleigh's Finest Prep School in Oklahoma. 
And uh, the other gentleman coming with us today is Daquan Miller. Daquan is originally from Charleston, West Virginia. Daquan was at Shooting for Greatness prep school last year in uh, Raleigh, North Carolina. These guys came um, with us from a long way away, and we really appreciate uh, them placing their trust in Motlow College and the administration in, in our program. A uh, word about Kirby and Daquan. Um, they're here today because in our system, in our style, we put a lot on our primary ball handlers. Both these guys have the ball in their hands and initiate what we do. If, it's a, if you want to put a football term to it, uh, you, there are quarterbacks uh, in the system we play. Most people would say, you know, it's not smart as a coach to bring in two guys that are used to playing point guard. I think if you look on their Twitter accounts, they both say point guard. And, and people ask me, well, you have two point guards. How's that going to work out? Well, then different than football, you, you know, it's hard to have a dual quarterback system. In the system we play, um, when I had the opportunity, Daquan committed to his first. I thought he'd be our point guard. Uh, and then I had the opportunity as, as Kirby, beca Kirby became available in early August um, and sat down and thought about it. And it was really a no-brainer to bring in two guys that can handle the ball like that. Uh, they've done a nice job blending together. They have a little bit different skill set. Um, they have not taken a me-first attitude to the position. If you ask them, they both point guards. But how they play, they play unselfishly, yet with the urgency, and are starting to develop the leadership that you would want in guard. So these guys here today, again, we try to emphasize team over anything. It's hard to pick out a couple guys out of the 16, but um, they're here to represent us today. Very proud of the way they've started the season. Uh, I coach these guys probably harder than anybody, but the expectation level is extremely high for both of them. Um, and they're doing a nice job taking steps each scrimmage, each timeout, and each day in pra practice. So again, Kirby and Daquan uh, off to a great start with us and our primary ball handlers and really the guys who are uh, molding into leadership role for us this year. Um, a little bit about our schedule. We have just completed, um, see we're through three scrimmages. We've actually played four. Um, we played in a Jamboree down in Atlanta. We played two teams down there. Thankfully, we can, we can count that as just one scrimmage. Uh, that was a great experience for our guys. Um, we opened, actually, let me back up. We opened with Bryan College here at Motlow. Bryan College was, it's kind of a nightmare for a junior college program and coach because they run, I think when I watched the film, about 24 different sets. And our heads were spinning a little bit because um, we, we only have a couple. And uh, they slowed the game down on us. We didn't quite understand how fast we wanted to play. Uh, but these guys figured out a way to win the game, which was a great step. We went down to Atlanta the next weekend and played in a jamboree down there. Um, we weren't very happy with our performance. We did just OK. Um, we lost two close games in the last minute. We missed a layup to tie the game with about 40 seconds left in our first game. And uh, we missed an opportunity for a wide open three to tie the game with about four seconds left in our second game. Um, we were disappointed. Uh, we got back to work this week. Um, one bit of news, I probably shouldn't say this in front of the players, but both the teams we played, one was picked preseason first in their league of 16, and the other team was picked preseason second out of 14. So we lost to two pretty good teams, although don't tell your teammates that. Uh, we weren't happy with, with losing, but I think we took a step. And then Wednesday, we played at home. Uh, we played Tennessee Wesleyan in a scrimmage. Uh, Tennessee Wesleyan was picked preseason one in their league. And we did a nice job playing uh, the way offensively that we want to play. Our motto every day is fast, physical, and together. Our guys are learning offensively how fast we want to play. We scored 104 points on Wednesday night. And uh, I think we could have scored even more in the last two minutes, but we kind of pulled the reins back a little. Um, the physicality part of how we want to play isn't where we want it to be, but the, t the together part, which is usually the hardest thing to do to get guys to play together, uh, we're really sharing the ball, uh, which is a great sign with how we play. Uh, we don't have a lot of plays and, and things we run. We expect guys to be aggressive, but we expect guys to share the ball, and our guys have done a nice job of that. Um, points that we're emphasizing, increasing our physicality, our hustle, our effort, our toughness and increasing how fast we play defensively. These guys, all of a sudden, when we get a rebound or the other team scores, they can fly down the court offensively. Uh, we're still working on flying back defensively. But the game we played on Wednesday night, that's how we want to play. We want to play in the 80s, the 90s. Uh, we want to play high scoring game, fly around and make a lot of plays and use our depth. So I think we've taken nice steps. Um, tonight's our last scrimmage. We go down to Swanee in Tennessee. Swanee's a little bit unusual for Division Three school. They're uh, athletic. They like to play. Uh, more of a junior college style of play, so we think it's a good fit for us. It would be good for us to go on the road, even though it's only an hour away, to learn what it's like to go on the road and play the, our style 
and bring our show on the road, as we call it. So we hope to do uh, good work tonight, take another step, and then that will complete our, our uh, preseason. We open the season down in northwest Florida on November 1st. Um, they've, won the, uh, they've been runner-up national champions the last two years, a storied program. We had the opportunity uh, to open our season with them. And then the next afternoon, uh, we played Tallahassee Community College, an outstanding program. Uh, they're, they're picked very high in that very tough panhandle league. So great opportunity for these guys and for our players um, to you know, take a trip together, to grow, to, to bond, uh, and also be, you know, be able to play against very high level opponents. Uh, and then Tuesday, we will open hopefully at home that day. Uh, yesterday, uh, we received um, a notice from the school we had scheduled that they no longer want to play us that day. So we're, we're looking for a home opener on the 5th. Uh, which is unfortunate, but it's all part of, of this uh, coming in late. Um, and we're, we'll just figure it out just like we have. Um, next thing, next play is what we talk about. We'll do the same with our schedule. So, again, really appreciate you being here today. Uh, these two guys would love to answer questions, right? Yes, sir. Absolutely. Sure. And, uh, <clears throat> and, of course, any questions for me that you have. Coach, so the, the, the game on the 5th, the loss to State game, uh, as of right now, loss to State is not coming. The, the men's team, yeah. They, the, men, the women the, the are still coming. Still come up here, the men's team the uh, made the decision to not come. So we are working hard to try to find another. Yeah, I was for... you know, on the phone late into the evening last night, early this morning, um, and have several teams that are interested coming here for that opener, and we just need to find one for the second semester. Are you looking at playing a real fast transition ball game? Are you going to be a half court type situation, or what do you anticipate there? Yeah, our style. We again, we say fast, physical, and together. So we want to play fast. We want to play up tempo. I think it does a couple of things. It gets guys um, in space and lets them make plays. And it's a fun style. It's easy to recruit to. It's easy to get guys um, great exposure for what they want to do at the four-year schools after here. Um, and I think it fits this team. We have a good skill level, and, they're, and they play better up-tempo when they're moving the ball and, and running up and down. I think they have a lot of fun doing it. Um, it helps keep the energy and even their focus level when you get to play that way. So that's our hope, and we hope that it will be a fun type of style for people in the community to come out and see. Question for the players. Uh, you're, you're practically out in the middle of nowhere. And, uh, you know, Metropolis is Tullahoma, Moore County, and everything else around here. Um, transition? Uh, I think it's real tough, uh, but you know, basketball really keeps the focus. Uh, when you come, like I come from Orlando, so it's a real city life, it's real fast, so when you come here, you really just got to put all your focus into basketball. You got to do it every day and work on it. It really helps you out. It kind of helps you out better. You can have no distractions, really, on schoolwork, and you just play ball all day, work on your game. Well, that was going to be my follow-up question, is it the lack of distractions, if you will, does that help not only with basketball, but with studies? Yeah, it helps a lot. Um, I'm I'm used to like the size of the city because my city not very big either. Um, Charleston, West Virginia. Uh, but as far as stuff being around, like there's there's nothing really around but basketball. That's all basketball and schoolwork, and that's all I really do play basketball and school do my schoolwork. As being chosen leaders, have you sat the bar before? Yeah, I have. Um, I want to just come out, play, play together, play hard, and have a winning season, and make the community and everybody around here proud. For sure, it's a, for sure, we gotta make a big statement with everybody being a new group and everything. But that's what Coach uh, helps us. Out. He puts us a lot of trust into us too. So there's really not that much pressure. We just gonna come out and play ball like we've always been doing. Something you kind of coach the dance, just to you know go out there and. Right, yeah, I think we just try to be together in what we do. And the guys have bought into that, especially new guys. It's tough, but that's the name of community college basketball. And you, you focus on freshmen, sophomore, you focus on experience. I don't think you spend a lot of time there. We just coach them really hard in practice, and then we'll see who rises. These guys, we've turned up the heat and the pressure. Uh, we put in our system and we see who the guys that can make plays in that system. 
offensively and defensively. These guys have done that consistently. That's what we expected. Thankfully, we had a shot even coming in on July 15th or whatever it was at guys like this to fit our style. Um, but we just try to put them out there, and these guys have made plays. They earn the respect of their teammates with their effort, their leadership, and the plays they make. So that's been an easier transition for me. If these guys, and these guys are highly recruited, they're, they're receiving a lot of attention from four-year schools. Um, so they already had this kind of resume. But when we came out from the first day, we played pickup, and they've kind of, the players have kind of looked at these guys, OK, you know, this is, this is going to be fun. And they enjoy playing with them. And the good thing is they make it easier on themselves. They share the ball. Because these guys could score a lot more than they do. Um, but they also could, and they have opportunity to take some bad shots, and they don't for the most part. And if they do, they hear it. So but we like to move the ball. And, th and their teammates have embraced the fact that they share the ball. We have four sophomores and uh, 12 freshmen. Yeah, 12 now. Now we have 12 guys that are at least a year out of high school. So we've got guys that either went to prep school, took a year off, have taken some time out. Um, we have two, just two now, true freshmen. So last year, high school, this year, college. So there's some um, definite blessings to that. Guys have been away from, either away from home already, which is a big thing, guys that went to prep school, or guys that understand the difference between high school life, basketball, school work. They had some exposure to that. And how important is it for you to, to uh, impress that teamwork mentality to your other players? Because obviously you're individually very good and to certainly sh you know, shine individually. But how, is it, how important is it to you to be a part of that team, to show that teamwork? Oh, it's really important because, first of all, we play the point guard position, both of us on the court. So. When we feed off each other, it just rubs off on the rest of the team. Uh, we're going hard. Everybody's going to go hard. If we demand something, they're going to listen most definitely. And if they don't, you know, coaches going to take care of it. So it's like we're like the coaches on the courts at all times. So. Any added pressure knowing you're coming to a school that won the state championship last year? Oh, yeah, it's a lot and, of pressure. And also, uh, I believe, had uh, some scoring records the last couple of years. and. Yeah, we hear, we hear it all around campus. They're always comparing us to last year's team. But, you know, we don't take too much of it. Uh, of course, we got to continue what's going on with the good things that have been going on. But I think we'll be fine. And obviously, you guys will have a target on your backs this year. So how do you handle that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, well, realistically, everybody's going to be looking to knock the champs off. So Yeah, yeah, most definitely. Right. I don't. I, I really don't. I really don't feel no feel no pressure from last year. I really don't feel none. I just I just want to hype all the players up and go out there and play and win the game. That's all I. That's all I want to do. I don't, I don't feel nothing. Want me to answer that one? Go ahead. Yeah. I mean, I think pressure is all about perspective. I mean, pressure to me. How I define it every day is you know, that's, that's like heart surgeons. That's the only picture I have in my office that I was able to put up. I still haven't decorated my office yet. Is my grandfather? He was in World War II, fought Battle of the Bulge, D-Day. You know that's pressure. You know for us, we get to basketball's brought us together. The pressure I feel is getting these guys graduated and getting them to be uh, growing their life skills and how they are as humans and working together. Pressure of the game is fun to me. I think that's a blast when we actually get to go out there and play. If we know we're doing the other things that are important, to me, pressure is perspective. Now, I love to win, and you'll see that, and, and I don't take losing very well. But at the, at the end of the day, if you don't come back with perspective on pressure, you can't be successful. These guys want to write their own story. Same with me, same with everybody involved in our program. So you got to have perspective or you can't perform with pressure. Absolutely. You know, it's, it's a tough thing coming in late like we did to recruit the community. Um, it's definitely an emphasis going forward. Thankfully, uh, the community is ready to be recruited too. So again, we'll, we'll be out in the schools and recruit the community. But getting these guys involved in the community, getting them to meet them, this is a great opportunity. Um, coming in late as we did, uh, preferably we would have something second, third week of the school year. But we're getting these guys in in August and getting them here and getting them schedules and getting settled in and getting everybody moved from all over. Uh, so we look forward to being in the community. Uh, we look forward to doing different things. 
to get you you all to get to know them. Uh, they're great kids, um, but that'll be important. And then going forward, you know, our recruiting philosophy, yeah, we'll absolutely want to be in, the, in this community and in the state of Tennessee. The state of Tennessee is stocked full of talent. It'll be important that we go through the meticulous process, make sure they're a good fit for Motlow. Tullahoma, as you've mentioned, isn't the same for a lot of kids. It's not for everybody. But if it's a good fit community-wise and college-wise, we absolutely want to focus with Tennessee. And we'll supplement with here and there with guys from across the country, uh, like these guys right here, thankfully were ruled late by the NCAA to need to go to junior college or different kind of weird core class rulings, you know how the NCAA is. We benefited from it. Uh, these guys technically didn't, but now they're making the most of the opportunity. So absolutely recruiting focus will be here and getting these guys out for you all to meet them will be very important. As we finish up, uh, I just want to remind you that the, the very best way for us to promote our ac academic, our student athletes and our athletic programs is through you. Uh, the best way for the community to meet our student athletes and coaches and become familiar with our teams is through you. Uh, so we appreciate anything that you can give us. We know that your sports pages and your newscasts are full of stuff. Everybody wants to see little Tommy, you know, play his, uh, you know, t-ball game. I, I know, I've been a sports editor, so I know exactly how this works. And we just appreciate you taking some time today, coming out here. Please come back for a game. We've got a table for you upstairs. We've got internet connections, whatever you need. Come back. Um, and, and we've got a great bunch of student athletes. As you can hear, uh, you know, they just want to win. They, they come here, they don't know what to expect at Motlow College, but, but inevitably they find out, we find out, they love it here because it really does allow them to just focus on playing ball and, and graduating. And our coaches and athletic director have done such a great job of graduating student athletes. We have such a high ratio that go on to four-year universities, and, and that's our purpose here. Winning's just a byproduct, fortunately we win more than we lose and, and so everybody wins. Um, any questions for me? That's just the way I like it. Thank you all very much. Uh, have a great day. We appreciate it.